Spock, Han Solo. Who has the biggest penis and what do they feel about that? You might find out, and I don't know about that, with me, Jim Jeffrey. What are they, uh... But, see, that's a trick question, because Spock doesn't feel anything about it. No fucking emotions on the cunt. He's just like, <laughs> whatever, just a functional dick. I move on. Like, I think Han Solo, Han Solo, he'd be stretching that dick out all day. <laughs> Not saying that wanking makes your dick bigger, but... <laughs> And, and, and uh, Jack's back. Hey, Jack's back. Hey. Hey, speaking of giant we dicks. Segue. We missed you, Jack. We was, uh, you were, he was doing a job for me last week and he couldn't be here, so he's got two segments for us today. Do you have two segments? I have no, one. No. Oh, for fuck's sake, you had an extra week to think of two. <laughs> Let's plug segments. some things. We've got a live podcast. Yeah, a live virtual Coming event. up, we're, we're trying something different, yeah. a virtual event. It won't be one that's aired. You just have to join it virtually to actually watch the thing. It's just going to be a bit of fun. Yeah. Kelly, you November, got the info? November 9th, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But if you can't make that time, it'll be live for 72 hours for you to watch afterwards. So you can buy tickets. Go to our um, Instagram, IDCAT Podcast, for the link or Jim's website, jimjeffries.com. But there'll be like... Q and A session, right? There's gonna be prizes. Right. There's gonna be trivia. There's games. Gonna be, you can we can you can do a meet and greet with Jim right. um, and, and the rest of us. Yeah, and the can, rest of us. Wanna, yeah. If you want to meet yep. Jack, not me. Yeah, not of course gonna leave. Yes, a place me, to be. me too. Me too. And uh, also, uh, this this is the week before we're doing the shows at the Ace, mm -hmm. uh, the Ace Theater downtown LA. One of the shows is sold out. Um, I believe the show before that it's a six and the seventh. I believe the six isn't sold out, but one of them isn't going to JimJeffries.com. Uh, these are always good shows. I, I yeah, always I have, I always have a lot of fun at these ones. Everyone comes along. So I'll be putting a lot of effort in because my agents will be in the room. So, you know, <laughs> I won't be phoning it in. I'll get in a bit of trouble if I don't put the effort in. So it's a good show to come to. Jack, what do you got for us? Comment world. Comment world. Oh, but we should mention that. <laughs> Amos Gill is in the room with us right now, so he might be commenting on the comments. He's just uh, hi, Jack. This, hi, Amos. Uh, Jack and I. Have, I feel like we've got a beef. We hi, need Jack to bury that. There's hatchet. no beef. I don't know why you're so scared. I don't know, man. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I think they all really thought Jack was upset that he couldn't be here last week. Jack's like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. No, 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 I no. cared. Oh, I just yeah. wasn't hurt. I didn't have oh, hurt feelings. Have it wasn't Amos's fault. Yeah. No. Yeah. But Amos is looking smug as all fuck. Yeah, over he there. really is. <laughs> he's looking like he's about to drop some fucking. Things on us. That, wait, you, you got a segment ready to go? Wait. No, I've got nothing. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> Can I promote something? Yeah. yeah. I forgot to. I will not be at the Ace Theater with you. I'll be in Victoria, British Columbia. Oh. So anybody that cannot make it to the Ace Theater because you don't live there and you do live in Vancouver or Victoria. I don't even know if Vancouver is that close to Victoria. But Victoria, British Columbia, where I know there's people listening. November 5th, 6th, and 7th, I'll be at three different places. I'll be at Herman's, that's what it's called. And then Heckler's Comedy Club. It's not a great name for a comedy club. <laughs> and then Herman's Jazz Club on the 7th. So the 5th, 6th, and 7th on my website, foreshaw.net. If you live in Victoria, British Columbia, please come out to a show and see me there. Or you could fly down to the ice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to you. I guess since we're all promoting if things. You, if you're very rich, <laughs> just fly down to the East Theater. But if you don't have a lot of money, come down. If, you, if you're living in LA and you don't like me, go up to Herman's. <laughs> Herman's. Heckler's Comedy Club and Herman's Jazz Club, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Are the Herman's connected at all? I don't know. I, uh, I, my, I don't know. I, I'm just going where they're telling me to go. <laughs> and so, I'll promote uh, something really quickly. <laughs> my Venmo is at Kelly Blackheart. Oh, okay, wow. Jack, what do you have for us? <laughs> uh, Comment world. What do you what do you get for the send in your Venmo? Is there any, anything sent to you? Yeah, no. no I mean, okay. I'll send a nipple if you want. No, I didn't mean anything like that. Just it's a, not my nipple. A piece of soiled underwear or something. <laughs> I don't worry. Uh, never mind. <laughs> you think you're so smart, you think your voice should be heard. You know about me. You're just a dumbass in here. Amos is like, what the fuck? He doesn't have headphones. <laughs> Really is that, so that that's, that's more no. production than no, we've we, ever put into anything we've done here. We, it's fucking yeah. hell, it's good. That was a new song? No. No, we've had we've that one before. That. It works just so good. It's so good. I love to play it. Yeah, yeah. It's like Blink 187. Well, give us a comment. 182. Um, was it 187? 187. <laughs> 182. <laughs> 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 I'm going to be at Herman's. <laughs> <laughs> this is to Jim. Uh, they said, love seeing you. Your merce. Mo well. Love seeing your moist tour Sunday night in Jacksonville, Florida. I had a fucking blast. Good. Yeah, we had a fun time fucking in Jacksonville. 
Uh, Amos was there in Jacksonville. Amos went to one of the, the, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He had the, I went the to the football out. game and I'll be honest, that was the first time I was aware COVID might be around me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I put on my LA Dodgers mask and it's the first time I've been shamed for mask wearing. A group of people said, mask, pussy, mask, pussy. <laughs> Take it off, you pussy. Go back to LA. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Damn, that I'll tell you what, I've been down in some pussies that needed a mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone else did ask who opened for you in Fort Lauderdale. So Amos is one. They Amos said, good. Lisa Curry. They said the Aussie had us cracking up. Right. Good work in Fort well, Lauderdale. Did, the Jacksonville Jaguars are a shit team material. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I was a real hack that night. Yeah, yeah, now Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, he, went, he went up and did what Whitehead did. Your team's no good, man. <laughs> like he did a bit of that. But uh, uh, people were writing to us. Uh, Amos obviously had a very good uh, gig and they were going, who is the Australian bloke who opened for you? And, and, and Lisa Curry, who was Lisa Curry? And so I was writing back to people that Lisa Curry was Kylie Minogue because Americans don't quite know. And then when they Google, they'd be like, wow, she does other things. And, <laughs> and I, I, call, I called you, uh, what was it? Uh, Harvey Epstein. Harvey Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> and I said his name was Harvey Epstein. I was going to go Jeffrey Cosby, right? Yeah. But I thought that's too on the nose. Harvey Epstein. And uh, they, no one flinched. And then, and then we took an edible and Jim went live yeah, on Instagram. That was good we went live on Instagram and we talked about this and then you got upset because my brother called you fat. Yep. Yeah. Also, speaking of Lisa Curry, she's her comedy album is going to be up for Grammy consideration soon. Fantastic. Um, you should go Woo-woo. follow her on Instagram at Olympian Lisa Curry. Is she an Olympian? No, but there is an Olympian <laughs> named Lisa Curry. So, so she's, she's trying to take all the yeah. heat. All right. There's also an Australian swimmer who was called Lisa Curry yeah. for Australia. Yeah. Might have been her. Um, on the TV episode uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, someone said, I really enjoyed Kelly on this one. She had a lot of interesting input and brought up some really good questions. Oh. Love you guys. Thank you for the show. Someone responded to that saying, I'm always impressed by Kelly's intelligence. Oh, yeah. boom. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I wrote that last comment. <laughs> She seems so and, dumb and, every other and the, time. And the word was surprise, not impressed. <laughs> I've seen her wasted. <laughs> um, on that same episode, uh, someone said, Kelly, you're looking awfully pretty today. I love your voice. Oh, thanks. Jim this and Forrest, hilarious no, as yeah, always. That was a misquote. You're looking pretty awful today. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I felt that day. Those two days. I those definitely two were... felt awful looking that day. <laughs> they said, Jack, dot, 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 uh, frowny face. JK, love you, bud. Be sure to audition for the next season of Love on the Spectrum. Let's turn that frown upside down. <laughs> yeah, that's still the it. second season of Love on the Spectrum is out, and it is fantastic. Have you have you ever thought of going that way for dating? Him infiltrating there. You think uh, he could be the king of that world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, okay. you're trying to deal with the rest of us. Go into the Spectrum dating pool. <laughs> I have not considered it, but now the will. Hefner of autism. <laughs> I didn't want to make any wow, jokes. Fucking about Amos is coming in, bit insane. Harvey Epstein's real. Fucking yeah, Harvey. Last time he's on the podcast. Harvey Epstein. <laughs> People came up with some merch ideas for us. Uh, someone really wants a T-shirt that says "Stillborn Shark." Do 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 do. Stillborn Shark. Do 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 do. Stillborn Shark. Do 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 do. Stillborn Shark. Do 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 do. Yep. Yep. And then someone wants a Korag the Caveman t-shirt. Yeah, you can make these at home. <laughs> I, you don't I, need us to make them. I <laughs> believe I did I've send never, Korag I'm, the Caveman I've to I've never made designer. an April 18th t-shirt and my audience oh. is filled with them every show. There's <laughs> there's people wearing <laughs> right. April knockoffs. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, yeah. I've never made one in my life. Wait, we are getting merch. We are getting Kelly. merch and I sent Korag the Caveman to our graphic designer. So we're just waiting to see the designs back. So maybe we will have a Korag the Caveman. And there's a Joe Finkel request oh, yeah, for Oh, yeah, Joe Finkel for sure. Joe Finkel. First man on the moon. Saw at least five of those. <laughs> so you guys remember a couple of weeks back, I mentioned that uh, tombstone that went missing. It was used to make fudge. Yeah, you know? yeah, I remember. So that, someone yeah. said, I'm from the area the fudge slab came from. People are obsessed with fudge. Someone stole that on purpose, and I guarantee every generation discovered its past and said, screw it. What, they're, they're from a village where everyone's obsessed with fudge? Mm. I guess so. Same I think it was like in Pennsylvania or something. Yeah, those, those people are weird. It would be those, those Dutch yeah. Pennsylvanians or whatever they are. Ooh, are those fucking weird cunts? <laughs> <laughs> they're speaking like a different language in Pennsylvania. They're not the even Amish. 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 No, no, the, oh, the, the Mennonites? The Dutch, like whatever Dwight Schultz meant to be, they speak like German or some shit. I don't know. I think there's no idea. Mennonites. There is. Know. There's like a breed of people there that are just remember. like speaking German to each other or some shit, and oh, they're weird. Americans. Odd. Looking it up, but I'll, you can keep going. Um, 
In that same episode, you mentioned that you didn't do any dissection in Australia. Not, so we had people write oh, in. Of course. Well, that's not my experience in Australia. Well, it was mine. Go fuck yourself. Or were they agreeing with me? What happened? Some people agreed with you they didn't do any dissection. <laughs> <laughs> but we had people write in from all over the world to see who did dissection and dissected what. So Canada, they did worms, starfish, and fetal pigs. And apologized each time. <laughs> <laughs> Finland was fish, which I feel like makes sense. Herring, yeah. France was cow hearts and cockroaches. Uh. Yeah, but that was just them doing cooking class. <laughs> <laughs> hungry, they said they didn't do it there. Mm, I know. Which is weird because, you know, yeah. they're It'd hungry. Be, be hungry. <laughs> um, Iran was cow's eyeballs. Right. Ireland just said yes. They didn't yeah. say what. <laughs> That's super The whole Irish. country said yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Ireland just said, you don't know me. <laughs> Kenya was yes. Oh, what, did, what did the Kenyans dissect? Didn't specify. Yeah, what, just a yes? I, just got yes? I don't know if these polls are official, Jack. Oh, these are in the YouTube comments. So, oh, you know, okay. so it's take real, what you will. <laughs> real stuff here. The, the, Kenya, the Nigerian said yes and that they were a prince and they needed $1,000. <laughs> New Zealand said they dissected mutton bird. Oh, mutton bird? No, yeah. that's someone taking the piss. They know that where they didn't I dissect mutton bird. That's like dissecting lobster. Yeah, you can't dissect the mutton bird. Yeah, that's too, that. it's too good eating. <laughs> I think Mennonites is right for the, the yeah. one thing. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Weird. Now, for Australia, some people said I didn't dissect shit and it's dumb. Other people said, yeah, we dissected a lot of things and it was really bad. So someone left a horrifying comment. They said, in Adelaide, South Australia, science class, they opened up living rats, stretched them and pinned the skin to the board and watched the organs do their thing. Yeah, yeah. Amos, you went to school in Adelaide. Was that your experience? Well, I went to a private school. So, right, no. so they did living people. <laughs> we, did, we did public school kids. Yeah, yeah they did their cleaner. <laughs> this last one came from Nashville about dissection. They said, my biology two class in high school outside of Nashville, Tennessee, went to an autopsy. We were supposed to just view it, but then everyone was super into it, and the examiner let us handle everything. He took out two bodies, male and female, Homeless people died from smoke inhalation in a building fire they were squatting in. He was also the medical examiner that did Elvis's autopsy. Oh, I once had an ingrown hair in my back and it was like, <laughs> it was quite like, you know, it was pronounced. Yeah. Right? And then I was in my 20s or something and I was in a, in, a, in a doctor's place in Britain and they fucking brought in students to check it out. That's oh. when you know they go, oh, this is uh, quite a... Yeah. Difficult. What's, I haven't seen one quite He's like hideous. this. And then they're like, do you mind if we bring some people in? This is a good one. And then all the students came in and go, well, what do you do here? And the doctor's like, we're not sure. <laughs> like, this doesn't fill me with fucking optimism. Did they pop that? Oh, like, uh, yeah, they popped. They cut it out. They had some we'll stitches and everything. It wasn't first. just a pop. It was like right in there. It was a fucking Ugh. full fucking afro inside me back. It was kept on growing and curling around. I didn't around. like that. I didn't like that visual. Ads. 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 Okay, I'm going to talk to you today about Butcher Box. I get Butcher Box delivered every month to the house. My favorite meat, I like the 100% grass fed beef. I get the grass fed beef ground meat and I make the meatballs, and that's one of my big recipes that I do. When it comes to meat, quality matters. And when you invest in high quality meat from Butcher Box, the benefits go way beyond just great tasting meals. Butcher Box sources their meat from partners with the highest standards of quality. No more searching in the grocery store for 100% grass-fed beef. You know, they go partly grass-fed, oh, yeah. some grass-fed. This one ate a cow. Yeah. No, nah, this one's all grass-fed. Free range, organic chickens. That's chickens that walk around like this. Have a life, go to the mall. Yeah, wonderful. Wild-caught seafood. Eh? That's mm -hmm. good. And more. Oh. Their sourcing decisions are made historically. Oh, holistically. Hey. Yeah. It's, Historically, they holistically make their decisions. They keep the farmer, the planet, the animal, and your family in mind, always delivering products you can trust. Uh, as I said, I like the I like I like the mince. I'm also the mince is ground beef to you Americans. Oh, yeah. We call it mince in the rest of the world. I like the steak, anything grass fed. I'm into. I like the free-range chicken because I don't want chicken that have been bloody, had horrible lives in battery cages with their heads and all that type of stuff where their legs crushing underneath the weight of their body and all that type of stuff. I, I like that it's meat I can trust. Every month, Butcher Box will ship and curate selections of high-quality meat right to your home. Each box contains between 
8 to 14 pounds of meat. Okay? It's a lot of meat, depending on your box. That's enough for 24 individual meals. That's a lot of meals, mm -hmm. depending how much you eat. Customize your own box or go with one of theirs. Either way, you'll get exactly what you want. Skip the lines for your Thanksgiving turkey this holiday. Butcher Box is proud to give new members a free turkey. Oh, yeah, can't ask for more than that. You could ask for two free turkeys, but now you're being you're being rude now. A free turkey. Just go to butcherbox.com slash IDK to sign up. That's butcherbox.com slash IDK to receive a free turkey in your first box. Free turkey. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Uh, I have suffered from anxiety and depression throughout my life and a brain that doesn't turn off. And I've found that therapy does help me. I always feel lighter after I leave therapy. Better help will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. So you can start communicating in under 48 hours. That's two days. That's a little bit of stress off you. You don't have to do as much math. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's a professional counselling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The service is available to clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counsellor. You'll receive a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counsellors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional therapy and offline counselling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit the website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK, that's better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counsellors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm a big advocate of, uh, of mental health. You, you can't put a price on being happy, but I tell you what, it's, this is very reasonably priced for being happy. <laughs> Uh, this this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and the I Don't Know About That listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash IDK. All right, please welcome our guest today, Russ Biagio Altman. G'day, Russ. Now it's time to pay. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Yes, though. Judging a book by its cover. All right. Uh, okay. Let me see here. Russ is sitting in a room. There seems to be a kitchen off the side. That means Russ is probably at his house. All of our guests are in our room usually. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, that's not, not true. TJ, not, TJ not, was in a nice room. No, no one with a bloody kitchen off to the side. He's got a fireplace to the left. Uh, so he's in a sort of a, a waiting area. It's not an office as such. He lives in a home. Yeah. He lives in a home. So that means mm. I'm, I'm going to go not a doctor. Because doctors normally have like a closed off area, you see, where they do doctory. Things. Are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? Yes. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that changes my whole perception on doctors. <laughs> uh, are you a medical doctor? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, do you specialize uh, in people? Mm. I should ask, are you a veterinarian? <laughs> It's the other way to ask that question. Not a not a vet. Not no, a vet. not a vet. Okay, but, oh, but but then he said people, and everyone paused and sort of went, "Well, I just was thinking, wow, veterinarian would be a good subject." That's yeah, all yeah, I was thinking. I was like, <laughs> she's talking about vet medicine, they're, but they're that's fucking, not today. I was definitely thinking, well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're fascinating vets, aren't they? It's like it's like fuck me. They, all they know about is dogs and cats, right? Someone brings in a goldfish, they know fuck all what to do. They're doing a lot of guesswork with the turtle. You know, they're going, oh, he has some shell problems here. They don't fucking know. I, I will say, though, that uh, that Russ, and he told me I could call him Russ, just so everyone knows out there. Um, I will say that it, he's not limited to just people, what we're talking about today. It's all living things. All living things. Yeah. Um, is our subject today disease related? It can be. It could be. Okay. Is it? It, 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 yeah, I mean, it's not it's not specifically disease related, but it could be related. To is disease. it a part of the human body that we're going to discuss today? 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, in a sense. In a sense. Yeah, yeah, sorry, you can ask. You can answer. Okay, so mental health. Are you involved with mental health? That would not be the focus. Right. No, okay. I'd say no. Let right. Me, uh, so when people come to you with mental health problems, you, know, you just go, "Can't help you." <laughs> I'll give you a your nut job. I'll give you a hint. So you just had a, you just had a, another kid. Yes, I did. And when you have kids, this is something that is whether you think about it, whether you know it or not, you're thinking about it. Oh, suicide. Ha- no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing an episode on suicide. I no, you're, you're looking at your newborn and you start looking at him and you're like, okay. And then when you're looking at him, you're thinking about this subject, whether you know it or not. Oh, um, uh, care. Nah, it's kind of like, all right. It's got a lot of hair. You pass this you pass things yeah. down. Oh, you look, ethnicity. The, <laughs> the doctor of ethnicity. Yeah, but that's what you do when you have a baby. You go, God, this doesn't look like All me. right, how about DNA? This is the best clue I can give you. Is it, are we talking about DNA today? No. <laughs> well, that's a clue, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole I would say yes. yes. I would right. say yes to DNA. Uh, genealogy. Genetics, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genetics. Yeah. Genetics, okay, yeah, okay. I'm not a great genetic um, genetic. We species, all know that so. you're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, both. I thought you thought you were going to say you didn't know about genetics. No, I'm not a good, uh, my genes aren't good. <laughs> uh, my mother's side of the family pissed in that gene pool repetitively <laughs> before, before it got to me. We, we got every problem under the sun. You want psoriasis? We got it for you. <laughs> you right. want red dots that you can't explain over your body? We've got it for you. You want to be dyslexic? Join the Jeffries family. <laughs> All right, Ross Biagio Altman is the Kenneth Fong Professor of Bioengineering, Genetics, Medicine, Biomedical Data Science, and by courtesy, Computer Science, and also the past chairman of the Bioengineering Department at Stanford University. That's a good one, Stanford yeah, University. Ross, I've heard of that school. one. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, he is the founding editor of the Annual Reviews of Biomedical Data Science and hosts a Sirius XM radio show, show and an iTunes podcast entitled The Future of Everything. What I love about that is you said like medical things and all that type of stuff, and then you fluff the word show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> all, your, all your other words, you're fucking out on lockdown, man. <laughs> so so uh, if you are interested in learning more about this subject or just in general, uh, uh, subscribe to the podcast, The Future of Everything, on iTunes Podcast. And what is it on SiriusXM? Uh, what channel is it on there? It's the, it's the business channel, which I think is 132. The business channel. Yeah, right. that, they got that, a lot of channels. Oh, yeah. that's a, I, I once had a TV show on FXX, which was <laughs> up in the sports section, and I had to try to sell it to people. It's like, just pass the Premier League channel to the left. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Ross Altman, if you could just tell us a little bit more about yourself or how, what you know, what led you to this life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, was, I was born in New York, and uh, I met my the love of my life in Boston, and so we came out to graduate school. Uh, at Stanford, uh, and we never left. Uh, both of us are on the faculty. She's on the faculty in the law school, uh, and I'm at the medical school in the School of Engineering. Uh, always interested in computers, but also wanted to be a doctor, and uh, just kind of paying attention to the world, noticed that not only was biology exploding with uh, the Human Genome Project and things like that, but also computation was exploding, and they kind of intersect in genetics and genomics because it's a lot of data. And so you need to be familiar with computers and you need to be familiar with health. Uh, And I had my MD, I'm a general internal medicine doc, uh, and you had to be familiar with genetics. So they kind of, that, that, uh, what would you call it? That Venn diagram that intersects medicine, genetics, and computers is where I live. And I've been a faculty member at Stanford for almost 30 years and I love it. Uh, And it's great to see you guys today. And and this is my, so your wife's a, a lawyer. Yeah. You're a doctor. You have kids? because Three kids. Yeah, okay, let's talk about genetics right now, right? Your kids are, are I assume, extraordinarily smart, right? So my, my son is in law school. He's actually at the same law school that my wife went to. And my youngest daughter is in medical school. And my middle daughter is in uh, finance and law and has provided me with a grandchild who's three three years old. See, this is the I thing. Love. I look at my children and I'm like, just don't burn anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me be honest. That's what you're thinking for the first 20 years. And then they turn into upstanding, uh, good uh, contributing members of society. And it's like, oh. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> is it just me or do all of our experts make me feel like I'm doing nothing with my life? He's just uh, like, yeah, I was a doctor, but then I decided it's like I would have given up a long time ago. So 
kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, when I Thank stop you. doing stand-up comedy, I'm thinking I might be a doctor. Oh, yeah. yeah. That- you, you get a mature age student, right? They just let you in if you have a good letter. Yeah. Sure. Your bedside Absolutely. manner would be impeccable. Oh, my bedside manner would be all right. I'd be good at that. I'd be like, <laughs> get Patch, over it. I'd be like Patch Adams but with more sweary. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck's going on here? Yeah, yeah, they should remake that movie with me. (laughs) Just me coming in with a red nose saying the word cunt a lot. (laughs) Uh, Russ has a cousin that's a comedian, Ted Alexandro. You know Ted, right? I do. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. He uh, he checked up on you because he didn't know you, and Ted said good things about you. Oh, that's very yeah. sweet of Ted. Oh, At I, least I'm assuming he did. I don't know. Russ oh, just said he knew you. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Russ is here. He came. <laughs> he showed up. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to ask Jim some questions about genetics, and um, you can uh, sit there and listen, and, and then at the end, give him a score, zero to 10, 10 being the best on his accuracy. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add them all together. If you get 21 through 30, gene edics, right? Mm. 11 through 20, khaki netics. <laughs> Zero through 10, jort netics. Okay, okay. You don't want the jort netics. Cargo pants netic. Yeah, cargo <laughs> pants netic. That'd be a good one. I like the jorts. All right, what, what is genetics, yeah, I Jim? knew that was the first fucking question. <laughs> I, was already, I was already sitting there going, he's going to ask that question. Yeah, we got to ask the broad one. Uh, genetics is what makes you you it's the biology of a person that passed down to you from your relatives that go into you so you're, you can be genetically gifted at something because your parents are athletes you can be genetically smart because your parents are smart it's it's what's passed down through your genes mm. who is considered the father of genetics uh levi strauss <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say the father just so that would have something to do with DNA. Uh, your DNA holds your genetics. Uh, yeah, you, that's the next question. Yeah, right? yeah, so, yeah. what is the father of genetics? Just the name. Um, fucking hell. Um, I'm going to say no, uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Okay. <laughs> what is DNA and what does it stand for? DNA is the compound of, uh, or there's, I think there's three different things and they can be in all the different combinations and they go in a spirally shape down there and everyone has a unique DNA. What's the spiral called? Uh, it's the, 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 the oh, fucking, if I, if I could have read up for five minutes, it would have been good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the genetic core. Okay. It's the, what? it's the strain, strain, is- the strain of DNA. Hmm. What does DNA stand for? <laughs> Uh, Strain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do not answer. <laughs> you said genes. What are genes? Um, genes are the DNA that is passed down to you from your relatives. What about mutations? Mutations is when um, your mother gets pregnant from your father, but another bloke was wanking in the spa. <laughs> <laughs> and throws a little bit of cum in there, and that makes a mutation. Now, a mutation is like, so when you watch Jurassic Park, right? And they <laughs> you have, just refer to Jurassic yeah, Park for the whole thing. When yeah. you watch Jurassic Park, they put the genes together to make a velociraptor, and then they go, but we want him to have webbed feet. They throw a bit of duck in there. Okay. <laughs> I was just watching Jurassic Park last night, and I will have a question for you, Russ, about that. I'm sure. I don't know if you have the answer. Uh, what are chromosomes? Wait, what's a genome first? Uh, a genome yeah. is is what you say when a gnomon is the room. <laughs> genome. Chromosomes, uh, what are chromosomes? Chromosomes. You, 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 you want me to keep asking you questions? You don't, want, <laughs> you don't want to have two Y chromosomes at once. That's what makes you Down syndrome. No, you know, I'm not saying it's bad, mm-hmm. but you don't. That's You want to have an X and a Y. You'd have an easier life. You don't say. You yeah, say yeah that, you'd uh, have any, you know, the, yeah. the, ideally. Okay. That's the answer for what are chromosomes? X, you have X and Y. The X and okay. Y. You want one X and one Y. How many chromosomes do we receive from each parent? Uh, fucking one each. Okay. Do you know what an allele is? Uh, an African animal. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Yeah, it's a, it's right, a, we're it's, gonna, it's, we're it's, gonna skip ahead. We'll get to that. We're almost It's a done. lionfish. It's like a snake with a uh, lion's head. Um. Let's see. I don't know. Fuck all about this. I, I never did good at science. Yeah. I was always bad at science. I stopped doing science, but then I believe in science. I just believe in other people doing it for yes, me, and 100%. I will trust you. Yep. Um, that's why like, I'm always harping on about atheism and all that type of stuff, and we have scientific proof. I'm not the guy who finds the proof. Okay. I'm the guy who talks about the proof later on. <laughs> what about homozygous? What does that mean? Um, homo- that would be uh, the, the missing link. That would be 
the link between us and the apes. It was the home. It was, it was the first upright standing monkey. All right, I'm gonna just ask you a few Fuck, more. Um, I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask you a few more, and then <laughs> give we'll me just nothing get, on I'll, I'll get through there. I'll, I'll come back to the questions, but I think uh, how about this? Are our personalities passed on through genetics? I believe so. Personality. I, I, I believe that person. I I am a believer that um, nature over nurture and all that type of stuff. I believe that nurture has a little bit to do with how your personality is. If you're from abusive parents, you might grow up to be abusive. Or if you have something mm-hmm. traumatic in your life, that will structure you as a person. But I think uh, things like sense of humor and stuff like it's that. Because you, you watch that documentary, The Three Perfect Strangers. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, and they also, I believe that people come out of the womb pretty much, well, 80% built yeah. on what they're going to be like. I, I have nephews and nieces and they're being brought up by the same parents and they have very distinctive personalities and there's no reason for it. One, one might be shy, one will be more extroverted, stuff like that. Yeah. I look at my brothers and we have three very different personalities. I'm going to ask you two more. This one you might get since you've had kids. Yeah. What diseases are passed through genes? Because I know you've... Oh, there's fucking tons of those. Yeah, just name a couple. Um, the red dots, blood blisters that are on your fucking body. <laughs> yeah. I got them from your fucking mum. Those bloody things are passed on. Um, I believe... Oh, God, what diseases are passed... There's loads of them. Uh, oh, loads, we'll put that. Yeah, I know, but let me think of some classics. Uh, diseases that are passed on through genes. Um, you Dwarfism. Yeah, that's not a disease, but that's a condition that is passed on if you have the disease. And then because what happens is when you have a baby now and they didn't do this before, they will test you for certain diseases to see what you have. And then they will test your partner to see if they have those diseases. And and if you both have it, there's a high chance that the child might have it. If one of you have it, there's a very small chance that the baby will have it. But if you both carry these things, not meaning that you have the, the condition yourself, you're but you're a carrier of it. I have a few different things. Um uh extraordinary handsomeness mm-hmm. was one of the things they had but but uh my wife didn't have any but when i had my child with uh kate i remember they they tested her and she had like a uh, 10 different things in her right and then they tested and now there's hundreds of different things but she had like 10 things that she was a carry for and then they only tested me for the 10 things that right. she had because the other ones didn't really matter right so they they tested us and then the, we go back to the doctor and the doctor goes Oh, it's fine. He doesn't have the 10 things. And then she was like, but what does he have? Because she assumed I was riddled with fucking birth defects <laughs> coming out the fucking wazoo, right? Uh, and I said, what difference does it make? She just wanted me to have more than her. Yeah. All right. Let's, one more question, then we'll, we'll talk to Russ. Who is mitochondrial Eve? I right, get the fuck out of here, Forrest. You think I'm going to know what, who mitochondrial Eve? I didn't even knew the word mitochondrial was a word. <laughs> She's a rapper. <laughs> Yeah, mitochondrial mitoc- 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 <laughs> leave. She the most okay, the most intellectual porn star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, uh, Ross Altman, how are you doing there? Um, <laughs> it was good. I'm doing good. That must have been hard for you, Ross. I'm sorry. <laughs> how, did, how did Jim do? Zero through ten. Ten being the best. Well, look, I heard a lot of truth. I heard a lot of truth. Oh, God, uh, Russ, so um, there were some edges. There were some rough edges. But this is definitely not a zero to ten. And. Uh, I'm going to give it in the in the the high teens, low twenties. Am oh, I no, allowed no, to no, say no, that? No, 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 You you go zero through ten. Yeah. We each We're do ten. Zero yeah. through ten. Yeah, yeah ten's okay, the best. I'm, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing a seven. All right. Wow. Hey, genetic no Marvel, Jim Jeffries. We're gonna go back through these. You know, yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, gets a, on you. he gets a one from me. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. It's a minus twenty five. I am yeah. kind of famous for being well known as a pretty easy grader at Stanford. I got I think I should now is the time to mention that okay. because somebody just talking about something I'm interested in, he he starts out with a five. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. That makes sense now. So he gets a two for And me, I knew the thing about the testings yeah. with babies. Yeah, yeah you just yeah. harped on about that. That's that's what Jim's trick is. He goes, Oh, I know sort of something about this. So that's let's keep what going on. Everyone's trick is that's how you get through conversations in life. Oh, well, Find that- a little niche that you know about and yeah. ramble. Ramble. Uh, Jordan Addicts. You're Jort. Um, that's what you got. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, Jorts. You know the jean, jean shorts? shorts? Yeah. Who wears those? Exactly. Are they All like right. Daisy Dukes or are they like... <laughs> no, they're not. They're bad. No, they're oh, like they're wear forest pants and right yeah, why now. Are you, why are you dressed like a fucking pitcher from the <laughs> 1950s? All right, this isn't about me. This is about your store. <laughs> I didn't know you owned such long socks. <laughs> I do. I love them. When your online checking account is running low, the last thing you need is a $33 overdraft fee. Mm. Last thing you need. 
Bloody hell. Overdraft fees have gone out of hand. Back in 2019, remember the carefree days of 2019? You, you were <laughs> racing around without a care in the world. You were just laughing at the bushfires in Australia, thinking nothing else will go wrong with our society. The banks took, the traditional banks took, $11 billion in overdraft for, um, fees. $11 billion. They didn't deserve, they don't deserve it. Chime does things differently. Chime is an award-winning app and debit card that has saved its members more than $10 billion in overdraft fees with spot me free free fee free fee free fee free sounds like a panda doesn't it <laughs> fee free overdraft eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on the debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no fees so you don't have to worry i'm a bit over i'm going to be charged for it chimes got your back now you deserve to have the financial peace of mind join the millions of americans already loving chime Sign up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started today at chime.com slash IDK. That's chime, C-H-I-M-E dot com slash IDK. All right, now I've got to say this bit quickly. Oh, my, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Banking services provided by a debit card issued by the bank, bank or bank or stride bank, NA, comma, members, FDIC. Spot me eligibility requires apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits are $20 and may, <laughs> limits after $20 and may be increased up to $200 by time. Time member overdraft, saving based on eligible members. Use of spot me, V33, dollar average overdraft fee. Overdraft fee database is bank rate, checking, account survey, and CRL, June 2020 overdraft fees report. <laughs> Thank God. I understand it all now. <laughs> All right, before we get sponsors, what we do is we, we say, give us a bit of products. Give us some something of, I, I don't want to endorse something I don't try, right? So I get a couple of kickbacks. I'm not going to lie to you, right? And Indochino sent me a pair of pants. I'm not bullshitting you. These these pants fit good. They are <laughs> bloody, every, they took every length. I, I, did, I, I sent them all my details. These are custom built for my body. They said they'd never seen anyone with this shape. They were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the right outfit can bring out something special in all of us. And Indochino, creating the best look yet, could be more affordable than you think. I didn't go to the showroom. You can go down to the showroom, but I just sent my measurements online. They sent the pants. I sent the measurements. Very quickly, the pants came to me. I haven't had pants fit this good in a long time. And I gave my actual measurements. Maybe because of sometimes I lie about how thin I am. you got to tell the truth. Uh, it may, I, I, you can go two pleats, no pleats, a seam, a cuff. The choice is yours. It's endless. Customize your buttons. You can, you can customize your buttons. Can you, it, it, fantastic. Fantastic. I've already worn it out. Uh, the ladies noticed the wife got upset. That's how you know they're good. The wife got <laughs> upset. Indochino offers completely custom fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and more for a surprisingly affordable price. Every piece is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail. Choose everything about the suit, the fabric, the lapel, the monogram, and the statement lining and create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. You can do the lining, the thing, put a monogram on there, little pocket, two pockets, other buttons like that. You design it. Indochino is now open at selected Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get great fitting personalized clothing. Find your nearest store at Indochino.com. Right now, you can get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more by using the code IDK at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $399 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code IDK. So, all right, what is genetics? Jim says it's what makes you you, the biology of a person that has passed on you through your relatives. Is that the exact definition or what should we go with? You know what? I gave full credit for that. That was a, in, mm. in normal words, that is a very good description of what genetics is. I would have said the study, the study of inheritance, and that's essentially what, what Jim said. Okay. Study of inheritance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't call it that. The fucking government will tax it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the inheritance of traits. The inheritance of physical, disease-related, biological traits. We want 50% yeah. so of your DNA. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's, so what's passed down through your genes is what he said, and that was full, full points. Okay. I asked him who is considered the father of genetics. He said Levi Strauss or Andrew Dice Clay. 
So it is neither of those. Okay. Uh, I think Whoa. the answer the answer oh. is typically considered to be this guy, Gregor Mendel. He's the guy who did the crossed peas. He grew peas. He crossed the peas. However, I have to say that his name has come under question recently because there have been uh, accusations that he might have um, fabricated some of his data. Some of the data actually looks too good uh, so that maybe there was a little bit of cooking of the books. So I'm not going to call anybody the father of genetics. And so I don't think I, I took no points off for not knowing about Greg Ormendel, but he would be the one traditionally who was cited. I'm not going to fucking give any credit to that P yeah. hack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that seemed uh, personal. <laughs> uh, you can see so you gave no points off, even though he said the <laughs> right. no points off. <laughs> okay. it, it was as good a guess as anything. I yeah. really got to enroll in your class. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what is DNA and what does DNA stand for? He said it's three different things that can be in different combinations and they go in a spiral and genetic core is the spiral, the strain, <laughs> the strain of DNA. I wrote that in all caps. And then DNA to... do not answer. I don't, he couldn't have gotten points on that and don't give him points. Right, so we're, spiral. We're, he's circling around truth there, but there's a, yeah. as, this is one of the rough edges. So first of all, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic Easy acid. To remember, on the tip of my uh, yeah. right. No big deal. It has four components, not three. So three is good. Three is in the it ballpark. It might be in your four. family. Right. <laughs> uh, there are the famous DNA bases A, T, C, and G. And uh, he's right about the spiral. We call it the helix, the double helix. Um, because you, you get this beautiful, you can't see me. I don't know if you can see, but you see get it. this beautiful, yeah, a beautiful, uh, double, like a double spiral staircase, um, which are co complementary to one another. Uh, and that is the DNA double helix that was uh, discovered in 1953 by Watson and Crick. Uh, and they won Nobel Prizes and, uh, of course, were very acclaimed for that. They're also motorcycle bike attorneys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they, were, they, were big, uh, they were big partiers. I read a book. About, uh, they were, uh, what was the name of the book? I just Maybe wanted, it was called, the, it was double called the Double Helix. It was Double Helix, yeah. I, and I remember they were just like, they're big drinkers, right? They were like, go out and party and drink and then they go do research and then they yeah made this the pub story. was key to their discoveries yeah i i um i russ you were just saying that you didn't know if i could see you i've only just figured this, this is a new new place where we're working out of the improv in the hollywood and um i know that they're looking at you through a camera i'm looking at you on a separate tv uh, yeah. i've just realized that for all the guests they must think i'm so rude <laughs> Never look but at i'm them. looking directly at you on a separate screen but i'm not looking at down you down the camera gotcha yeah, I had in in, co in college uh, was when O.J. Simpson, uh, you know, allegedly had you know murdered some people, and I had two friends that decided to go as O.J. Simpson's DNA. That's what they went as for for Halloween, <laughs> and so they just got all these balloons and put them in a spiral around their bodies. And I'm like, there's no way anyone's gonna know what you are. You're gonna literally have to tell everybody. Why was it so specific that it was his DNA too? Because that was the you know. My 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 of the times. My yeah. friend, my friend uh, Dave Johns, who you'll know from I Daniel Blank, and he won the Palm Door and everything like that. But he's a fantastic guy and an amazing comic, and I worked with him for many years. Did one of my favorite jokes on this, and his joke was, uh, "They've just invented a morning after pill for men. What you do is you take it, and it changes your DNA." <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. What are genes? Jim said the DNA that is passed down to you from your relatives. Yeah, that's so you could be more specific, but that is definitely true. Uh, we have our, our genome, by the way, is the set of all of our genes. So it's just that's all it is. The genome is all of our genes. And each gene is a segment of DNA that is responsible for some part of biology. Like maybe it's involved <laughs> with uh, the color of your eyes or maybe it's involved with how well you metabolize certain kinds of food or so a, a gene is just a segment of the DNA that has a job. And so then you read about in the newspapers that a gene was found for X. It means that they found the segment of the genome that looks like it helps control X, which is a disease or a trait, like you're, how tall you are. Many traits, I use this word trait, uh, many traits are, are the composite of multiple genes. So there's only a few things where one gene determines the whole thing. So for height, for example, there are literally hundreds of genes that conspire to make you tall, short, or something in between. Oh, okay, I thought we were going to say something. No, no, no. I uh, look, I, I, I look. I, I, we're about to get on this stuff about what makes you you, right? Yeah. Because well, I've got a theory on what makes me. Well, me. that genes. That's part yeah, of. I it. got, yeah. I got a theory on what makes me. My mother, right? 
My father's one of the funniest men that has ever lived, but has zero stage presence, right? Yeah. My mother has had nothing to say but commanded a room. <laughs> Thank God it went this way. It yeah. could have gone horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You have nothing to say and don't want to be around people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could have gone the other way. Yeah. So, so I'll, we can skip ahead there because Jim just brought that up. Are our personalities passed on through genetics? He believes so. So is that is he being accurate there when he says that that's being passed down? Or? There is no doubt. So this is an active area of investigation. So I want to be, obviously, always want to be totally uh, a candid about this. It is an area of research, but there is evidence for sure that this is one of those typical nature nurture. There is a huge component of nature, and that would be the genetics, uh, just as Jim described with uh, mom and dad and their, you know, uh, sense of humor. These are very advanced, right? Sense of humor is uh, one of the most advanced human uh, capabilities. Like when you're learning a language, being able to understand jokes in that language is like the last thing that you learn because it takes so much complexity understanding. So I think it's fair to say that large parts of your personality are certainly inherited, uh, but that nurture component also plays a role and exactly how they trade off and how they interact is still an active area of research because you need geneticists, you need psychologists, you need social scientists. It's just very hard research to do because it's out, it's interdisciplinary and it's way beyond any one discipline to figure this out. I, I so, so me and my brothers, right? I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here. They might get upset with me. Who knows? But my eldest brother doesn't have the funny gene. Uh, my middle brother does have the funny gene. My eldest brother has a lot of qualities that I wish I had. He's calm under pressure and doesn't freak out over fucking everything. You know, <laughs> wonderful things to have. Yeah. But he doesn't have the funny gene. But then uh, I look at all the nephews and nieces and my, ch uh, my children and there's certain ones that have the funny gene and I knew it from when they were about one. Mm -hmm. I knew that one's got it, that one doesn't have it, that one has it. And so now a lot of pressure. My son has it. My eldest boy has it. He's funny. New baby. It's jury's out. He's only seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> but he hasn't made me laugh yet. <laughs> yeah, my you old. Know, oh, sorry. Go ahead. One of the things that they say about parenting is that a lot of parents go in for the first kid and they think it's all about nurture because, you know, they've never had a kid before and they're going to say, I'm going to do all the things. And then they have the second kid and the first kid grows up. They have the second kid and most parents move from nurture to nature in exactly the way I wanted to comment on this and exactly the way that uh, Jim mentioned at this at the top of the show where you really become convinced that your kids you can you can affect them at the edges but a lot of what they have seems to be um, built in yeah, yeah it is like some kids are more se uh, sensitive than others some are a bit more tough some are a bit, lose their temper quicker. It's just, there's yeah, not my, a lot my, you can do, man. My oldest brother is seven years older than me. And so we didn't really grow up together because he's really smart. So he was going to boarding schools and stuff like that throughout my youth. And we joke around that we met for the first time when I was 18. And it's, it's uncanny how similar our sense of humor is and just how much our personality is the same, um, especially because we just didn't grow up together. Right. So, yeah, I have a friend, a good friend of mine, and his <laughs> his mom um, was uh, his, his mom's had a daughter that was taken away from her when he was when when she was born, never met her, never saw her. And then through DNA testing, she found out this is saw her daughter like, you know, through that met up with her. I think she was in her thirties or forties or whatever. And they both had the same degree in college and wow. they had the same profession. <laughs> Wow. And they never, wow. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, a, a doctorate and the guys pretty amazing. Like that kind of stuff. That's for sure. Yeah. So I, I, I give Jim a, the way he said it was actually at the perfect level of certainty where he should have been. All right. Have you seen that documentary? Three perfect strangers. Yeah. Three perfect strangers. Oh, I would like to see that. Oh, oh, it's it's good. Good. Do you know about it or. Yeah. yeah. I've read a little bit about it. Yeah, um, th three triplets and they all meet each other. They all got adopted yeah. out of the other families. And there's a whole lot of stuff about the government doing tests. And we won't get into that if you haven't seen the documentary. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet. For some reason, I was thinking you guys were talking about the other one where the kid was in an accident. Or oh, no, that's the one where the mother got the kid yeah. molested all the time. Yeah. This one's not quite as dark. Okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, think that, I, I think that these three guys were almost exactly my age. I think it happened just at the time that I was born is when they were born. Mm. Uh, uh, and yeah, and they showed up in college together together right one of them shows up to just i'll just say the beginning one of them shows up to college 
after the other one had just left or something. And so they were all like, Hey, how's it going? And they're like, what do you mean? I haven't met any of you. Exactly. And yeah. that's how they end up connecting. And then they find out there's three of them because they were separated at birth. And I they won't give anything away other than that. But three it's identical just, strangers. Yeah, three identical strangers. But they were identical in personality, and everything. It, they were just wow. the same guy. It's, it's a nature nurture type thing, which is what you mentioned too. The nature yeah, so I should say that uh, yeah. people who are identical twins are hugely valuable for that reason. Uh, I, in fact, I think it's okay for me to say my daughter is dating an identical twin and he gets mail and email all the time asking him to sign up for studies because this is how you can do this nature versus nurture research. You take two people who are identical genetically and then you look for similarities and differences and that's how you figure it all out. So if you know any identical twins, they're golden. Oh, we, <laughs> uh, we know a, an identical twin yeah. That are the same fucking person, finish each other's sentence and talk are the same. Jay and Nikita, yeah. friends of the show, I guess, friends of ours. Yeah. And yeah. they're your family. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're good friends of ours and they're the most fucking identical people I've ever met in my entire life. Yeah. They freak the fuck out of me in a good way. <laughs> but they still are different. They're still different. There's still uh, little uh, qualities uh, that are different about them, but so, they're, they're very similar. So Jim, when he said he, said he thinks they're 80% nature and then 20% nurture, is there any like, do we like... Is there any like, that would be different for every single thing you could ask that about would have would be different in that spectrum, because there are things that we know are 100 percent nurture, yeah. uh, like your ability to speak a foreign language that has nothing to do with you. Well, sure. you know, maybe some intelligence, but basically that's nurture, whereas there are other things that are 100 percent nature. And for anything you could ask me, height predilection to get a heart disease, diabetes, I would have to give, I would have to put that bar somewhere different between zero and a hundred. Oh, this isn't, so I was an egg donor for like 11 years and I got matched with this couple at one point and then they found out I have tattoos and they decided not to go with me. And they were like, they were like, I was like, that's so tattoos are not genetic, but is there, <laughs> is there like a proclivity to yeah, get yeah, tattoos or piercings? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if that's something that they test in genetics is like, is there like a daredevil gene or so like something like I've jumped out of a plane. I've done all these thrill things. Seeking, yeah. Thrill seeking. Yes. Uh, that I'm sure it's been studied. I'm not up on that literature, but I would be stunned if there isn't a literature on people who are risk takers versus people who are more like, uh, I'm not going to be a risk taker. Yeah. Like I believe I, so I, I've had a couple of, you know, I, I would say mild addiction issues in my life, tobacco and this and drinking and whatever. But I, I hear addiction's a thing that's a genetic thing as well, that you, you, you have a, 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 a predisposition to being an addict if you had a parent who was an addict. Is that a nature or nurture thing because you saw someone drinking all the time or because you have the gene in you? It, yeah, that's a great example of something that's both. In fact, that's my area. My, so my area of specialty within genetics is uh, your response to drugs. And it turns out that like when you, so some people, when they take opioids like codeine or morphine, they have a much different response than others in terms of the high that they get. Mm. And that has been shown to correlate with the people who are more likely to become addicts. It doesn't explain everything, but that's part of the equation. But the other part of the equation is access to the stuff uh, and, and other things that might be more part of the, the nurture side. But yeah, so that's a great example of something where not only is your um, surroundings might be leading you to uh, either be exposed to drugs or try them, but then your physiological response makes that first experience that much more pleasant than the guy next to you. Is um, I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here either. Is uh, I've suffered from uh, depression on and off in my life. Uh, my father had uh, quite bad depression throughout his life. Is that something that's passed on, or is it just misery? depression is very genetic? So again, there's it's not a hundred percent. But when you look at families, it 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 tracks through the family in a very reliable way. And in fact, a lot of you know you hear about alcoholism running in a family. A lot of times. That alcohol is a self-medication for the for the depression. Mm. And so what you're actually seeing when you see a family history of alcoholism, which, by the way, is in my family as well, uh, could be also a family history of depression. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going to see my dad next week for the first time in 30 plus years or whatever. But when I and I hadn't spoken to him in almost that long, too. And when I spoke to him, he told me I'm a compulsive gambler. 
and I found out he was too. He didn't say he was a compulsive gambler, but he, he told me a lot of stories about gambling You're and like, losing money. It, and, yeah. all. <laughs> and then he kind of said, I had some gambling problems. And I go, all right, thanks a lot, Dad. He actually, <laughs> he actually said, I bet I had it worse than you. <laughs> <laughs> so I blame him. I, I find yeah. it, it must be hard for people when you go, oh, okay, so I gave that 80% is genetic and 20% is, and we can't put a number on that as we've just sort of said. But it, like when people say things like, how does Jeffrey Dahmer's brother feel? When he's sitting there going, oh, I'm a bit of a different person. Like it must be hard for him to date. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that would be. Just don't put that, change your last name. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, but that, that, that really, Jim, that's a super important point that I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to get on my uh, professor pedestal. It's super important for people to feel that no matter what their genetic background is, you know, you're as a human with a, with a brain, you can overcome a lot of the things that you might not be worried that you might be worried about. So I, I, I don't like, there's a, th a phenomenon called genetic determinism where people find out, Oh, I have a slightly increased risk for depression or for smoking. And they throw in the towel and they say, well, that's it. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to be depressed. And that's not the lesson I would want people to hear because you, we have many stories of people overcoming despite a predilection to go in one direction, they figure out how to go in another direction. And I want to give, that's an important message for people for obvious reasons that you want to be in control of your life. I know. I feel like I'm the best version of myself I've been in my life, but it's, it, it's very hard to change. It's just little tiny steps. I'll do this better. Right. I won't do that wrong again. I'll learn from my mistakes. Some type of stuff. And you fucking hell, man. Well, it's easy to, to use those things as a scapegoat too, for things that you don't want to put the work in to change. Like it, just in any right. situation where somebody's like, well, I'm not good at this thing, so deal with it. It's like, well, you can get better at that thing. Oh, Just yeah. fucking try. I, I've always <laughs> said if you learn from your mistakes, I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what are mutations? Jim just said Jurassic Park. He said some other yeah. stuff too. That we, we don't Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's basically what I got from his description. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, so let me just say uh, I I, I – um, yeah, there was a whole thing about mother getting pregnant from another guy. Yeah. That is not that we're not given any points for that. That's not quite. Yeah. Uh, that's I not didn't even mention that, yeah. Russ. That's what. <laughs> yeah, that we didn't, respect that you didn't too happen. much. My, to repeat my that. mother didn't like that. <laughs> so, so um, uh, a mutation is when you have your DNA and something happens that changes one of those DNA letters. I said there were four letters: A C T G C. A C T G A C T G. Uh, and if one of those gets changed, and it often happens during procreation. So, you know, mom gives you AAA, but all of a sudden, because something messes up uh, in, in, uh, d during the process of infertilization, it's now AAT. That T that used to be an A for mom is a mutation. And that can change the gene and how the gene works. And so we all, uh, we have, so I don't want to get too much into numbers, but one genome, one human genome is 3 billion DNA letters. So that's mm. ACTG in a long, long string, 3 billion long, which, by the way, fits on your phone. So it sounds like a big number, but it is very finite. Um, every I time have a flip we, phone, would it still fit on that one? Yeah, well, flip phones, it, it would be tight. <laughs> uh, the, um, every time we make a new human in the, in the usual way, there are probably 50 or 100 of those DNA bases that spontaneously change letters. So you're not getting it from mom and you're not getting it from dad. It was just literally a little mistake in the copying that the cells were doing at the time that they made you. So, so that's where mutations come from. And I should say mutations are important because over the billions of years of evolution, it's the mutations that introduce the changes that allow selection to happen in the, in the Darwinian sense of natural selection. So now all of a sudden, if, I, if, if that mutation that I got gives me fitness so that I can survive in a situation where my parents would not have been able to survive, I'm going to grow up and be able to reproduce. And, and that's, how, that's how evolution happens. So, so I'm, I, I, I'm trying to follow this. So we yeah. all... We all have mutations. Everybody has. We all have fifty or a hundred mutations. Fifty or hundred by... mutations, and yeah. do they, then do they become our core genetic pools? That those mutations get passed on to somebody else. They just become standard in our genetic pool. That's exactly right. And then your kids are going to have fifty or a hundred different ones. Right. I tell you what. I've had two children now with two different women, and fuck me if the women don't get upset when the baby looks exactly like you. <laughs> Both times this thing came out looking like me and the women get depressed. I go, you, you know it's yours. <laughs> you were there. 
You've got dominant genes. Mm. Mm. How do I get to be able to control the weather? That's a mutation I want. That's, <laughs> it's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you think this is like X-Men? Yeah, exactly. That's gonna, what a mutation is. You're yeah. going to be like mutants. Storm? Yeah, 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 exactly. What are chromosomes? Jim said, you want to have an XY. Why, why makes you have Down syndrome? That was his answer. Yeah, so, so Jim was Jim was circling the truth. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna say circling. That's gonna the be truth the name of my next special. Circling the truth. It's <laughs> actually great. Circling the truth. That's a good name. You're gonna have to send Russ some fifty dollars for that. Time. Men and women have 22 chromosomes that we all have. Then uh, men have X and Y. Mm. Uh, where at, uh, for their sex chromosome, and, and so Jim, you were talking about sex chromosomes, uh, where women uh, women are XX. So you get an X from dad and an X from mom. That makes you a woman. If you got an X from mom, mom only has X's to give. So mom is always going to give an X. Right. But whether right. you get a Y or an X from dad determines whether you are uh, a, a biological male or female. So there are 23 chromosomes. The 22 that everybody gets. Uh, plus X and Y, which is the sex chromosome, which would be number 23. So, okay, at the risk of getting a- And you've heard of this company, for example, 23andMe. That's why they're called 23andMe. It's about your 23 oh. chromosomes. So, so, so at the risk of getting us in a lot of trouble right now. Um, so when it comes down to sex, scientifically, there's only two sexes or can that be, you know, there's people like hermaphrodites and stuff like that. I'm not talking about what people feel about internally. Or whatever, right. but but scientifically, you can only do it that way, right? So it's 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 tricky, and I want to be uh, as you said, I want to yeah, be very we, sensitive. Uh, uh, yeah. So XX would be a biological female, XY would be a biological male. But as you said in your answer, sometimes we get an XXY, or we get uh, a YY. That's shouldn't ha- that that shouldn't happen mm-hmm. under a kind of typical situation. And so those folks. Really, there's not a good name for what they are. And what people tend to do is they call them by what they look like. And, you know, maybe that's okay. uh, But there are these um, uh, unusual, atypical um, combinations where that we really haven't defined it. And then you're absolutely right that gender, which Mm. is how somebody identifies, is a whole different ball. That's another conversation altogether. I don't want to get anyone in. in And it's interesting when you you talk about something that's so complex, where it's you have three billion. What what did you say? Three billion genes or three billion of those letters? Yeah. So it's like, and mutations happen regardless. It seems crazy to me that people can't fathom the idea that mutations can happen that make people feel different ways or genetically predisposed to do certain things. It's like the body's so complicated. How is it so hard to understand that something like this might happen? Here's a question for you. And uh, is there any evidence or any tests that have been done? Is your sexuality given to you by your genetics? That is a, what we would call a third rail question, right? (laughs) Very sensitive. Yeah. Uh, There have been lots of publications about this, and it seems that there may be some genetic determinants of, for example, whether somebody's gay or not gay. Uh, and and that is an active area of study for some, and a, not an active area. No, no, I, of study I, I, for I'm, I'm a believer that you're born gay. I don't believe that people. I don't believe it's a nurture thing. I believe you're right. you're born a homosexual or a heterosexual. Um, but I didn't know if there was any test to go. Oh, you had Arnie Flo as a lesbian, and now you might be. You know, I didn't know if there was any 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 information on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm unaware of any genetic test that can call that. It looks to be too complex for it to be a, at least a simple test. Yeah. If only two gay fellas could have a baby, then we'd find out. <laughs> yep. Well, they could try. Um, With help so, from Kelly and the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many chromosomes do we receive, receive from each parent? Jim said one each. Yeah, I was right. 23. I was way out of that one. Yeah, you get one genome from each parent, but really you're getting the 23 chromosomes from each parent. Is that why Jordan's number was 23? Because he's perfect. (laughs) Yeah, probably. It could have been. I don't know if he's perfect. You see a documentary? He's a perfect basketball player. He he had some social issues. Maybe he was a little bit too competitive. I'll tell you what, I was was chatting to my son the other day, like a competitive nature, that must be a genetic thing, right? People who are athletes have things. Because my son is showing a, a, a bit of skill in sport, more skill than I had. His mother's more athletic than me. But I realized like two days ago that my son will not grow up to be a professional athlete because I was watching the Dodgers play. And uh, I and he said to me, he goes, um, why do people care if they win the World Series? Is it actually important? And I was like, well, it is important. 
important. And he goes, why is it important? I go, because we say so. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, like he didn't understand. He goes, if you lose, so what? We all move on with our day. And I'm like, oh, no. Yeah, but I mean, I, I was the same way at his age. Like, and I played Division One volleyball. Like, I was I was never individually competitive. I was still a oh, no, good you, you don't want an overly competitive yeah, child. They're, That's they're a fucking obnoxious. pain in the neck. The one yeah. that flips the Monopoly board over every time. They don't get fucking Mayfair. Those cunts are fucking off the hook. But I didn't I didn't really care about winning them. I, I won a lot. My mom told me a story one time I was at a swim meet and I got second for the first uh, for the first time. And so I got a red ribbon and I went up to the ribbon table and I go, excuse me, I get the blue ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's funny you're mentioning this. I, my, one of my good friends is a sports writer and he said, the, and he's written for all, almost all sports. And he said that the one thing that is universal in these high level professional athletes is incredible uh, competitiveness over anything. Like who's going to drink the Coca-Cola faster? Who's going to get to their car faster? They just are competitive. And uh, probably that's a case where a part of that is going to be nature. And part of it is nurture is they would not be competitive professional athletes if they didn't have this incredible level of competition. I felt I was more competitive in my twenties than I am now. My competitive nature is almost gone. No, you're pretty competitive still. Yeah, but I, you didn't know me in my twenties. I was a pain in the neck. I I, I play (laughs) video games against you. You're also very competitive (laughs) with yourself. You, yeah, you hold no, yourself well, up to a really well, high that's standard. That's the whole thing. If you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. <laughs> <laughs> what? I set it up and you knocked it down. <laughs> uh, a leal. Jim said it's an African animal. I said it's yeah, a, it's, it is not. Yeah, go ahead. You want to you yeah, amend that? I'm a, sorry. No, it's a lion eel. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm sticking with it, man. And any, <laughs> anything you say, I'm going to disagree with. <laughs> <laughs> now go on. What is it? In genetics. Uh, cause I'm going to, I'm going to steer clear of Jim by just saying in genetics, uh, an allele is the, the type. Okay. So you, as I said, you get one from mom and one from dad. Well, I didn't actually say this, but for every gene, you're going to get one copy from mom and one copy from dad. And they may have little differences because not all humans are the same. Uh, and they're not identical twins. And the allele is the ver- the different versions of a gene that are available. So, so for some genes, we know that there's hundreds of different versions of that gene floating around in the human population. So there would be a hundred alleles. For some genes, they're so critical to human biology that it cannot tolerate any mutations. If you get a mutation, you don't live. And so for those, there's only one allele because that we've never seen any living human who was able to have a mutation that didn't wreck that gene. So the alleles are simply the, the choices for the number of choices that are available for any for any particular gene or genetic element. Here's a question so. I'm pretty sure I know the answer for, but I, I okay. Is there anything you can fix in a parent that can be passed down to the child already fixed in the sense that, so I've struggled with hair loss. So I'm follically challenged. I've done a lot of transplants and take tablets and stuff to keep my hair. If I could take a pill now to fix that, would my children be safe of the misery of going bald? Up until today, the answer has been no, but a Nobel prize was given a couple of years ago to a woman named Jennifer Doudna, who has figured out a way to edit your genome and and in such a way that it could be passed down to your children. So the next big thing in medicine, and this is somewhere between five and 50 years away, but it's coming, will be our ability. And there are trials, there are clinical trials for some very focused ones even right now. So, but the future is coming. And that was a question that we didn't get to, but I'm glad you asked this question because it's, I think it's really important for people to realize that our ability to go in and fix things about your genome and then have you pass it down to your children is rapidly coming. And that's going to be a huge ethical and technical challenge. The technical challenge is how do we do it and not have people totally messed up the ethical challenge is what are we allowed to change right. that is not going over the line? Right. So, wow. so I imagine, like I imagine slope. ethically the things would be things like uh, if you could cure diabetes in a person. So diabetic diabetes isn't something that runs in the family. Ethically, if uh, I don't know if a woman wanted bigger breasts or something like that, something cosmetic would be an ethical thing or is it just. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Do you use a bazooka? 
to solve problems that might not be bazooka level problems. Like, and, and, and then this is, this is not the important thing to say about this is this is not up to the scientists to decide. This is a social cultural societal conversation is where do we want this? Like what's, what's insurance going to cover? You can think about there's a little bit of a precedent in plastic surgery. There are plastic surgeons who do things like after a burn that your insurance would probably, uh, you know, um, reimburse. Right. There are other types of plastic surgery that you might want. We don't have to go into the details where the insurance company would say you are on your own. And it may be that someday that will be the same conversation, but it may even be that we'll say society will say certain things are just not allowed. Um, you know, we value diversity in our society and in our population. And just because everybody wants to be six foot four doesn't mean we're going to allow everybody to be six foot four or everybody to be blonde or or whatever, yeah. whatever the trait is. So this is going to be a very interesting discussion, which has already started. But I, my, the, the, my basic point is that that will be a capability that we will have probably in our lifetimes. Uh, both times when I found out that I was having sons, I asked the women I was having the child with, what was your dad's dick like? Because <laughs> I wanted him to have a fighting chance, you know. <laughs> like, you know How did those you, conversations you don't, want to, you don't want to inherit this thing. Great example. <laughs> great example of where society needs yeah. to have a conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, we were going to get to that question when we got there, so we're skipping around. Alleles, we covered that. But allele, so any, just getting back to the other, so an allele, that could be variant, would be the color of your eye or like shape of your body or something like that. But there's this, yeah. and then there's other ones that you say have to be the same always. Okay. Um, what does homozygous mean? And Jim just said the missing link, the link between us and the apes. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that I think he was thinking of, and, and this is totally understandable, Jim. Mm. Uh, there's, you know, our species is called Homo sapiens, and there's Homo uh, australopithecus, and there's a million Homo this, Homo that, which are different human like, um, human like strands uh, of baboons, basically. We're a mm. baboon. Mm. And there were others that were, we were competing with. And obviously we won and they were all extinct. And I think that's where your mind was going. Mm -hmm. But the word homozygous is actually unrelated to that. All right, okay. Homozygous just means uh, the allele that you got from mom and the allele that you got from dad are exactly the same. So you have two copies that are identical. Uh, and that's important because you were mentioning the screening that you might've done for the kids. Yeah. And what they were asking is mom had this problem at a certain gene. If you had it too, then there was a risk that the kid would be homozygous and have two bad copies and would get disease. And so what they were telling you during that counseling was that mom had a bad copy. You had two good copies. So no matter which of the copies you give to the kid, the kid will have at least one good copy. And so we don't have to worry about that disease. Right. Oh. So, so the, uh, this is why you shouldn't impregnate siblings and stuff like that, right? So, exactly. So because, because we're going to have the same genes and all that sort of stuff. And you'll have the same problematic genes and it's a much higher chance that your offspring would have two bad copies and lead to problems. How far can you go into your family gene pool? I'm not I'm ask, <laughs> ask, ask, asking for a friend. Um, <laughs> how, look, there's this hot cousin I have, right? <laughs> how far how many you, cousins removed? Yeah, how far can you go in your gene pool when it's okay? Because, like, you know, you grow up in a small town, say you don't know that your third cousin – for example, the royal family, the royal family, uh, the, yep. the, the queen and Prince Philip were cousins, distant cousins, but they were related. How far can you go before you don't get Prince Charles ears? So this is not <laughs> this is not my expertise, but I but I just because I'm interested in it. I have read recently that they think that third cousins are probably safe and fourth cousins are almost certainly safe. So siblings are a no. Okay. First cousins are a let's just stay away. Damn and it. then uh, uh, <laughs> second cousins are borderline. But then third cousins, you begin to be like, okay, this is the baseline risk that you would have if it was a total stranger. Right. Okay. Okay. It's good news for you, Louise. Now remember a third, <laughs> a third cousin. Wait, 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 Louise. You can't see Louise. You can't see, you can't see Louise. He's, he, His little face. <laughs> I, I don't know what Kelly's referring to, but Louise is the one recording all the sound for us now and he does all the editing. Is it, I'm sure he's what, got a hot what, cousin somewhere. Oh, so, I so you know, so <laughs> He's got so many hot cousins. No, so the, just, just to review, a first cousin shares a grandparent, a yeah. second cousin shares a great grandparent, yeah. a third cousin shares a great, great grandparent. But if you're at a club and you meet somebody who shares a great, great grandparent, you probably can go for it. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. But you, yeah. you, you, but you might, the, the thing is, I'm asking is you might find out too late. Yeah. yeah. Might, no, that happens. Th- there must be a lot of people that did Ancestry.com and go, let's just send in these things. <laughs> yeah. And then the results came Fuck. back. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, personalities, passed through genetics. We talked about nature and nurture. Oh, what diseases are passed through genes? Jim said red dots, blood blisters, loads. I've got loads of stuff. But there's, there's, yeah, he's there's, right. There's things, baldness and stuff. I wouldn't call baldness a disease, but it should be called a fucking disease. It bloody kills people. <laughs> Okay. It's extraordinary yeah. handsomeness is that one well, of them? Well, uh, well, well, to some degree, yes. And in fact, so I'm giving full points to Jim on this question because he made a lot of comments. A lot of his side comments were right on target. Like, there's loads. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he he even I think at some point he said, "Well, that's not really a disease. That's just kind of I, I forget the word he used, but it was like trait or just a yeah. condition." That was also correct. So that was that showed a, lo- a high degree of sensitivity, and it, that was Ooh. good. And and so you know th- there are diseases that are called Mendelian diseases. Remember Gregor Mendel, the guy who might be a cheater. Mm-hmm. Um, Mendelian diseases are where it's a very straightforward uh, inheritance, like. Um, if some of the, these, those are like, if you're, if one parent or the other has it, you're very likely to have it. And others are both parents need to have it. And then you might get it. Um, and then there are much what we call complex diseases. And those are the ones that tend to involve many, many genes. Um, but if you include, there are thousands of Mendelian diseases. And those are the ones, by the way, that you, they were checking in your kids. Most mm. of those are Mendelian where they're looking for two bad copies. Um, but if you count diseases that are complex, complex genetics, then uh, depression, diabetes, uh, schizophrenia, Crohn's mm. disease, uh, uh, certain types of cancer all have genetic uh, components. So the answer really is loads. Uh, and it's um, infectious disease even where you say, well, how could that be genetic? I just got exposed to, you know, I got exposed to E. coli and now I'm sick of stink. Even those have some genetic determinants. Oh, so yeah, this is one of the promises of genetics is to kind of help health. I got to tell you, man, you, you got you got comedy special titles out the wazoo. <laughs> what was this next? What was the other one? Sick as stink. Sick as stink. Sick as stink. <laughs> I'm writing these all in the notes. Um, <laughs> so we went over, can we alter genetics? Do genes control how we respond to drugs? You spoke about that. You said that was your specialty too, right? Yeah. That was, um, yeah so I have a clinic where um, folks come who've had terrible side effects to drugs that they weren't supposed to have. And then we look at their genes and we figure out if any of these bad side effects can be explained because they have a different version of a gene that causes them to either metabolize the drug or respond to the drug differently. Here's a question for you. I, I, I'm sure there hasn't been any research done, thank God. But is there any animal we can procreate with? Like, you know, you can make a liger, a lion and a tiger, you can make a liger. It, can we can we this can we make a half gorilla person? Is that possible? Asking so for a friend. Th- <laughs> that was gonna that was gonna be that was gonna be one of my dinner party ones, but I but I have another one. So let me just tell you, All right. there is evidence that humans like us made babies with Neanderthals. And in fact, you can see in the DNA of almost all people yeah, who have right. European ancestry, Any Trump you can rally. see the DNA. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> You can see evidence of that Neanderthal DNA in many people of European descent, even today in our DNA. And in fact, some of these companies will tell you what percent Neanderthal you are yeah, based on that, that analysis. Yeah. I, do, I did 23andMe and it says I had no Neanderthal, but it, but it, I, could, I was like, what? I didn't even know that was a, a thing. So, so I yeah. am not aware of any other non-extinct species that we can make babies with. But if you guys find out about one, let me know. All right, well, I'll go around and fuck some animals and <laughs> tell you what my results are. Okay, last question here before we get to the Denny Party Facts. I'm glad you have another one. Who is mitochondrial Eve? Jim said, oh, okay, get the so fuck this- out of here, Forrest. Most intellectual <laughs> yeah. porn star. Wrong. Yeah. So I liked his answer, and this is in the weeds. So I don't think you could – I'm not faulting Jim for not knowing this, but it's kind of a cool idea. So um, most of your DNA, as I, I've said like three times, is half from your dad half from your mom. But there are these little tiny things in your cells called mitochondria. And you inherit your mitochondria pretty much 100% from your mom. Mm. Which means that if you think about a, a, a young woman, she has mitochondria that she got from her mom. Her mom got them from her mom. So it's a maternal line all the way back. And so mitochondrial Eve is the very first homo sapiens human woman 
who had the mitochondria that basically all her daughters, 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 daughters now have. So it's the it was basically the first woman mitochondria. And so we like to think about the mitochondrial Eve, which, and this is the Adam and Eve idea, is that she was the first Homo sapiens, uh, probably in the middle of Africa somewhere, probably about two hundred thousand years ago. And can they test your blood for it? And if you have a high count, can you become a Jedi? <laughs> 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 that was just for Jack. That was good. That yeah, was wow. good. I'm what speechless. Mid- what mid- mid- midichlorian. Yeah, the midichlorian. Yeah, that is close. That is close. Very yeah. good. Very good. Were you listening to his answer at all? You know, I was just ready for that joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was no clue what mitochondria no, is. Here's <laughs> what I have to ask, just on a personal level. Um, with the – okay, so I is this a wives' tale, old wives' tale, the um, – the baldness gene comes from the mother's father, or is that just bullshit? No, I think that is based in some truth. It's one of these traits that is more complicated than just that. But um, I believe that there is scientific evidence that, um, and, and that would be tricky, right? Because the mom is supposed to be handing down things randomly. So she could give you her mother's or her father's. So right there, you know that it can't be 100%. Because let's say there was just one gene for baldness, which there almost certainly is more than one. But let's say there was just one. And if your grandfather had it, he there's only a 50-50 chance that he would have given it to your mother. And there's only a 50-50 chance that she would give it to you. So there's still an effect of your grandfather on you statistically, but it's not in stone because of these like dice rolls that happen during during reproduction. Uh, because I, I don't know if I subconsciously did it or consciously did it, but both of the women that I've had children with, their fathers have got great headed hairs. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. like, like, oh, Kate's dad. He and kept, huge dicks. He kept his head, <laughs> he, he kept his hair during chemo. He, he died of pancreatic cancer. Dang. He kept he kept a full head of hair during chemo. And I, I like those odds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, all right. As you mentioned, it's time for the dinner party fact. Do you have another one for us that you can tell us, uh, our listeners, something interesting? I thought you just called him Forrest. No. I thought I was about to go, that's your name? No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you have another one, Forrest? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm losing my mind. Uh, All right. So what do you have for our listeners that they can use okay. to impress people at a dinner party or bar? Okay, have you guys heard of Genghis Khan? I yeah. have, yeah, yeah, the restaurant. He, uh, <laughs> he was also a, uh, you know, a very, uh, a, 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 a savage guy who took over most of uh, what is now Mongolia and, uh, and Western China. Well, he was reproductively extremely successful. What I mean by that is uh, by hook or crook, he had a lot of children Mm. and his children, who were, of course, the son of Genghis uh, or daughter of Genghis. But I'm talking about sons here. um, His sons also um, uh, were very uh, reproductively successful. So why am I telling you all this? Mm. Uh, Genghis Khan has 16 million direct descendants alive on earth today. Wow. Wow, One out of every 200 males on the face of the earth is a direct descendant of Genghis Khan. The rest of us is Sinatra. (laughs) (laughs) How do you find out? Can you find out? It's it's very easy to find out because in the same way that I was telling you about the myandria, I think many of us know because we were talking about before you get if you're a, if you're a guy you get your Y chromosome from your dad. Your mom doesn't have any Y chromosome. Mm. That that's what makes you a man. And so your dad's 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 dad your that Y chromosome comes right from your great 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 grandfather on the paternal 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 side. And so what they have is they have all these men who have the exact same Y chromosome. And when you go back and look in Mongolia, you see a concentration there. And then when you go to the historical records and open up a history book, the only place they could have come from would have been somebody who was having lots of children about 900, 1,000 years ago. And guess who that is? Genghis Khan. Okay, before we – that's when we meant to end the podcast, but I I just – is there doctors like yourself or is there anyone out there or are there computers that can look at your DNA strains and your chromosomes and all that type of stuff without looking at a person and say that's going to be a white person with blonde hair and blue eyes or a black person that's this tall or whatever. It, can you do that? For, just ethnicity, by- for ethnicity, absolutely, for $100 you can get that. And I have it. My whole family has it. And you, it can tell you, um, in some cases, it can tell you within 50 miles where some of your – ancestors were from. And so I know that I have a little bit of Irish, a little bit of Italian, da, 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 da. Uh, and they can do that a- across the globe with different levels of resolution. So the, an- the ancestry, the answer is definitely yes. And it's a hundred bucks or less. 
trickier to do things like your traits, like what color, but, but, but we can estimate height to within three or four inches, I believe is the latest work. Mm -hmm. um, hair color and eye color, we can estimate. Uh, and so that's what genetics is all about. You've, you've actually taken us full circle. Genetics is about taking the DNA and seeing how much we can predict hopefully useful information about health, but also about other stuff. That'd be a good game show. Just put three people up there, yeah. a couple of scientists. <laughs> they, What's your DNA? <laughs> I'll host it. Um, <laughs> Dr. Russ Biagio Altman, thank you for being here. And I want to mention the podcast again. It's called The Future of Everything. There's a couple of podcasts. I, I just subscribed to it. There's a couple of ones. This one said Stanford's Stanford Engineering's the future of everything. Yes, Wall other, Street yeah. Journal has one. They stole the name from us, but I wow. can't get anybody to sue them. Ah, uh, mm. well, what, your kid's a lawyer. Your wife's a lawyer. Yeah, right? yeah. we're going to work on that. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, work yeah. That. <laughs> so, just ask a dinner, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so please listen to that podcast. I'm just looking through it. A lot of cool guests on there. You have a lot, a lot of episodes on there. So subscribe. And 160. To, yeah. Subscribe and listen to that. Um, also, if there's anything else you'd like to promote, I see you have a Twitter handle. Or you, you looks like you're active on there. Do you want? Yeah, to that's all. It's all professional stuff at RB R R B as in boy Altman, and that's stuff related to the show, but also related to stuff that happens in genetics or computing that I think is interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. on uh, Twitter. Well, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we really yeah, enjoyed it. It was a lot of interesting awesome. stuff. Yeah, yeah really Russ, cool. I love this. Oh, I'm going to listen back to this episode. To, I really, to that was really interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it, Doc. Uh, I, I, if you're ever at a party, right, someone walks up to you and goes, you're not related to Genghis Khan, say, well, I don't know about that, <laughs> and walk away. Good night, Australia.